So far, we learned all the basic things about microservices, and it's time to go in depth and understand some of the other components which are used along with the microservices. Now, let's uh, uh, take the same example of e-commerce uh, uh, application, and in which let's take one complex page and understand why we need API gateway specifically. Now, if you look at uh, this example page for Amazon product listing, in which you will see a lot of information which is needed to render this specific page. So what I've done is I have listed out all the different microservices which we might need to be accessed uh, to get the information to render this particular product page. So the first thing is, uh, you know, product specific API uh, or microservices uh, in which we need to get the information specific to the product. So like description of the product, uh, thumbnails or images or the name of the product, the size or different varieties and all, of, all sort of that, including the price. So all of this information can be accessed from the uh, one microservice called as search and product microservice. And the next thing is inventory microservice. From here, we can get the number of items uh, or the product available in the nearby inventory according to your, your pin code, which you have entered in your profile. Um, and the next thing we need to access is the shipping uh, Microsoft from shipping microservices. Here we might get the information on what is the earliest date you might get the product to your house, um, something like that, right? So that information as well. And then you need to access the rating and reviews of this product. So that will be a separate microservice. So we need to call from here as well. And also we need a recommendation engine to show the frequently bought together or the other customer who bought this, bought this. So we need this as well. And uh, merchants, why do we need merchants uh, microservice is because we also need to show what are the other purchase options from where you can also purchase. That could be a different price and different shipping option, something like that. And also the finally, we need a finance plus insurance microservice as well um, because we need to show the extra you know warranty purchase options or emi options so we need microservices if you see these microservices none of them are like of a same functionality everything is you know totally different domain this is more of a product listing and search this cannot be combined with any of these things right and inventory is totally different thing uh, shipping is also it's stored more of a backend where it involves around you know packing shipping all of that sort of stuff. So it, th these are the case of these are the kind of services which which can be uh, of our individual services on its own. So I think it gives you a better example now. Now consider this is the page which basically loads the. Okay, I'm just writing the mobile. So so this is the product page uh, which has all the comments, uh, say reviews, whatever stars and everything, right? So, so this page to render, if it was a monolith, um, you know, architecture, consider these are modules uh, just, just for now. And this is a total application, one uh, monolith application. In that case, maybe we would have had exposed one API called as product uh, info and then give the product ID, like uh, say 121. So we would have actually got all of the, this information in one single API, basically because we would have had access to all of these modules in the same code base, call all of the function, put it into one JSON and then return it as rest or something. So only one call, we would have got all of this information in monolith. But what we did was we built microservices. So we you know, decomposed monolith app to microservices. So we have these many microservices, everything is deployed separately. Now what has to happen is, you will have to call independently each services. That comes the first uh, pattern of accessing is direct call. Um, basically we make the first one is direct calls where the client or the front end calls all of these individual microservices one by one or parallelly uh, it, it based on, uh, it's up to the client to call uh, how it wants. Um, so. Basically, it calls this one, gets the response, all in parallel or serially. However, basically, it makes uh, seven different calls. In total, seven calls to get off the information. 
yeah, it gets all of this information. But is it really good? Or is it is it the best way to do it? Uh, I don't think it is the best way because you have to make seven calls and it will be definitely um, have an impact on the load perform time and the resource consumption and, and, and also uh, it has a tightly coupled, uh, the, the client is basically tightly coupled to all of these services. Say for example, if tomorrow I want to split, um, say rating and review microservices into two different microservices, then I will have to update my client code as well to, you know, um, make one more call just to get rating, one call to get rating and one, one more call to get the reviews. So this is not really a good way to deal with it. So that leaves us with one more option or the second way to access is called as API Gateway. So the second option is API Gateway. And that's what this video is about. Uh, like what is the use of API Gateway? Okay. What happens when we have API Gateway is we will have one more service layer in between the client and the microservices. So let's call this service as called as API Gateway. What happens now is anything or everything, this is, this is like a front uh, facing service for all of the microservices we have. So any client who wants to access the microservice, now we don't have the capability or we don't have, uh, uh, we can't really access this microservice directly. Instead, what we have to do is the client has to make a call to API Gateway. And the API Gateway in turn makes a call to all of the services and gets the whatever information we might need. We can actually make seven different calls to get this seven information or we can write or we can configure API Gateway or expose one API like in monolith, monolith like product info on the API Gateway and API Gateway internally can make seven different calls to the microservices and get all of, combine all of the information and give back that information with one call to the client. Since this API Gateway and all of these microservices are on the same network, it shouldn't take too much time to make these calls as well. Definitely there is a hop, but it shouldn't take too much time. And also API Gateway can make a parallel calls to get this information. So it is much faster, okay? Um, since it is parallel, um, or if there are use cases where you have to make two serial calls, one after one, because of some updates or something like that, you can actually configure all of that in API Gateway. Basically, like you first call the search product and based on that, some information which we get it, you might need to make six different calls once this call is finished, that's also possible. There are so many other, uh, you know, um, advantages uh, in using API Gateway. I'm going to talk about it after this. So th this is the idea of a API Gateway. It is the it, it will sit in between the client and the microservices and it acts as a gateway for all of these microservices. And uh, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages later. And there is one more access pattern called as uh, BFF, which is, which is a variant of API Gateway. Uh, this is called as backend uh, for frontend. This is not best friend forever or whatever. It's, it's called as backend for frontend, which is sort of API Gateway pattern, which is little different, which serves little different use cases. It's somewhat similar, but instead of just having one API Gateway for all of the services, we can have one more API Gateway only for mobile. Okay, maybe consider this is for mobile then one more API gateway is specifically for our web. Or we might have one more API gateway, which is for third party only, okay? And all of these API gateways will have different domains to access, okay? So in this case, all the mobile phone, mobile apps, and web, uh, mobile web websites will basically make a call to API, mobile API gateway and get the information, whatever it is configured for this URL. And similarly, if we are making a call from web, then the request will go to 
API Gateway Web, and then get the same information from the same microservices. And similarly, if any third party sites wants to get this information for integration or something, they all actually make a call to API, you know, third party API Gateway. And these will basically make a call and then Compose um, combines all of this information and gives, gives it back. Okay, so this is basically is the back end for front end um, pattern. And, and what are the advantages of using back end for front end um, uh, gateway is? Say, for example, uh, for mobile, it's really not worth it to pull all of this information at once. Instead, we can make it such a way that first it, it is going to pull all of the information which is shown in the top. And then once they scroll it, maybe it will fetch all of the other information. Or maybe if the mobile is on 2G network, we might trim down some of the information. Or uh, if, if, the, if the mobile is on Wi-Fi, it behaves differently. So we can have different kind of combinations um, uh, specifically designed for different kinds of devices. So we can have a different gateways to uh, you know, make this behavior differently for different devices. Um, so that's that's one possible options which we can use mobile sorry API gateways for. So let's talk about the advantages of API gateway. The first one is authentication. What can happen is say for example if I have an API gateway here and the client is making a call to API Gateway and in turn this is happening, right? Now, authentication mechanism can be happening in the API Gateway itself instead of every microservices checking for authentication, say token-based authentication or something which can be implemented in API Gateway which will check, uh, which will basically authenticate in the API Gateway itself instead of having authentication in every uh, microservices. That's one use case. The second one is SSL termination. And definitely HTTPS is what um, everywhere it is recommended, right? For the better security. Now, if I'm making a call from the client using HTTPS, it doesn't has to be HTTPS until the microservices. What we can actually do is the HTTPS can be verified only in the API gateway and all the internal calls could be only HTTP because it's much simpler. You don't need to set up all the you know, HTTPS um, certificates and everything on all of these microservices. These services will basically work only using HTTP, but the API gateway will work on HTTPS. So SSL termination basically happens on this API gateway layer itself and all of the subsequent calls from the API gateway will basically use this HTTP. And also one more advantage is the, for, for the clients, they only use HTTPS or HTTP. But from API Gateway, it need not to be always HTTP. It can be WebSocket or it could be uh, whatever, whatever you want. It could be even HTTPS or it could be a you know, um, RPC call, anything. So basically, the, internally, you can use whatever protocol you want to in different ports as well. But for the external world, it is always HTTPS or HTTP with port 80, or you can configure any other port for your, uh, whatever you want to. But the main point being is it need not to be the same um, as the client side to client to API gateway. The same protocol need not to be in the inside as well. It can be anything. So that's one advantage too. And, and also API gateway acts as a load balancer when you basically um, increase the number of uh, servers just for the search product. When you scale this microservice itself, say you are scaling this to n number of servers, which is search product only, then this API gateway can actually understand there are more, there are so many you know instances of search product. It actually load balance between them also. It has that capability as well. And the next thing is insulation. Uh, what it does is definitely it actually insulates from security perspective as well. Uh, like no client or no one from outside can directly access these things. Um, maybe you can put it in a VPC or something like that. Um, and and only API Gateway can access those microservices. That's one way of insulating. And the other way is it's actually loosely coupled now because um, say, for example, tomorrow, if I want to break this microservices into two more, 
microservices that's possible now i don't have to change my client code at all none of the android ios application code to be touched um, there is no need to do change do changes in the client side at all because all we need to do change is in the api gateway instead of making two one diff, one call from to the rating and reviews now we have to make two different calls and then get this information merged and even if the, the structure or the response of these services changes we can always do the translation transformation to the standard structure which the clients are consumed so that way also it is insulated and maybe today you would have implemented these as like seven different services tomorrow if you think that okay we don't really need two different microservices for one for recommendation and one for so, sorry let's take a different example one for shipping and one for the inventory maybe if you want to merge these two you can do that and just make one call to the service which gets both of the information or it could be that this is calling the some other api so anything can be happening inside the clients uh, need not to change at all that's one more uh, that's the advantage So, so what are the disadvantages there of the API gateway? The, the disadvantage of API gateway is, first one is increases the hops, right? Instead of directly accessing, it, it's a one call and you would have got it. But now it's like one hop to API gateway and from API gateway is again making one more hop. It could add a little bit of latency, right? That's one problem. Um, and, and also the other disadvantage is the system it is like getting complicated, right? Because there's, you have to take it off API gateway and then you, you'll have to configure it and you have to make it high available, available. And also you need to maintain all of these microservices. And definitely it is, it looks like complex. Um, so, so these are the disadvantages of, or you know, drawbacks of using API gateway. But um, I think you got, you got to understand what exactly API gateway does um yeah that's about it